Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Active Inference Institute, quarterly roundtable number two in 2023. It's June 30th, 2023, and this is going to be our quarterly updates and ways that you can participate at the Institute and in the Active ecosystem. So welcome to the Active Inference Institute. We're a participatory online institute that is communicating, learning, and practicing applied active inference. You can find us at the links on this page. And note that we'll be transitioning our emails over from activeinference at gmail.com towards at activeinference.institute domains. This is a recorded and an archived live stream, so please provide us with feedback so that we can improve our work. All backgrounds and perspectives are welcome, and we'll be following video etiquette for live streams. Today in the quarterly meeting number two of the year, we'll start at the Institute scale, give some updates at the Institute level, and then we'll look a little bit deeper into primarily education, but also research. And then I'll have some closing thoughts by way of a presidential address about where we're at with active inference. And if you're watching live, please write comments and questions in the live chat and we will look to address those during. Okay, so starting with the uh, Institute scale, some updates coming from the Institute. Here's one way that we can visualize the Active Inference Institute in June 2023. We are within the Active Inference ecosystem as well as within other ecosystems. And we have a nested structure. Alex, would you like to describe this? Uh, yeah, I think for this moment, uh, it's great to see this structure and understand what, what is actually in place and working and acting and adapting. And from the very beginning, we consider it uh, from perspective of systems uh, thinking. And from perspective of active inference, we always think about some kind of nested and hierarchical structure, uh, which can be built and structured accordingly. So having it right now, like embodied, it's great to see it. Totally agree. At the Institute scale, where these first updates are gonna come from, we have the officers, the board of directors, in the scientific advisory board we have two organizational units which steward the development and support participation in projects and projects and learning groups are really where it happens on the ground and so we're going to talk a lot more about these but this is the nesting and our own relationship with the ecosystem another way to to see this is in terms of people and positions at the institute so starting from the left, we have casual engagement with our products and services into the niche. So this might be the very video that you're listening to or watching right now. It could be the transcript of this video that you're reading. It might be the active inference ontology. It might be the active block for software package. There's all these different open source products and services that we provide to the niche. And one moment, you will decide to participate in a project or a learning group. And that can be more towards the learning, more towards the doing and leveraging your contributions at the Institute. And some participants will choose to solidify their participation through volunteering or engaging with the internship program, both of which are new and, and really excitingly developing well. And then we haven't listed any names of the, the many of you who are in all of these different stages. And you may want to play another role or another position in the Institute, such as the scientific advisory board, board of directors, or the officers. So a lot of uh, appreciation and thanks to everybody who's shown and not shown on this slide. Um, we are um, really appreciative of how you all show up for the Institute. Alex, want to add anything on that? Uh, yeah, 
Uh, even from this slide, uh, we can see that uh, a lot of people are already involved in activity and uh, provide their great insights and different perspectives and backgrounds and experience. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, a lot of people not shown here, but we know them through our community platforms and so on. So you can see this progress in terms of uh, participation in activities, and it's also great progress. All right, moving on. We are excited that for our third Applied Active Inference Symposium to be held in August, we will have the theme of enacting ecosystems of shared intelligence, active inference as a cognitive kernel. We have a really broad and global co-organizer team, which is very exciting. So thanks to everybody who's in the co-organizing team for this symposium. We're just getting started on the organization. So in the coming days and weeks, we'll be providing more information on participating in a more formal call for presenters. However, if you're listening to this message now and you are really excited to do a presentation or a workshop or mentorship and be a part of the Active Inference ecosystem, then please reach out to us. Alex, anything you want to add here? But actually, yes, I think uh, we can remember that it will be a third symposium. And it's cool that we have that uh, yearly rhythm for this type of activity. And hopefully this event uh, bring us and for people who will participate uh, new insights, connections, and ground for future developments in their research. Cool. All right, just to summarize and update a few of the institute level programs. So volunteering at the Institute, it's a way to engage. It is just making it that much easier to get involved with one or more projects and to start to get that recognition from the Institute, understanding your contributions and also on your own resume, or your own work history or your portfolio. Volunteering is really an incredible way to learn by doing. If you wanna apply or learn about organizational active inference, or if you wanna think about communication as active inference, education in the context of active inference, gripper and the gripped, if you wanna perspective swap and see it multiple ways, learning by doing on a project through volunteering, we hope is a really unique opportunity. And what you do will and does really matter. So if you're taking notes on the margin of some paper, or if you're developing lists that you felt like help your onboarding into active inference, you can make a leveraged contribution by sharing that kind of information. Or if you're not quite sure what type of contribution or the impact it would have, we can help find that kind of a niche for you. The internship program is being a volunteer, but wanting a little bit more structure around that. We have about 20 currently active interns from all around the world, different backgrounds, levels of technical familiarity with the active inference, ranging from truly some of the people who I believe are experts to people who just found out about active inference and wanted to use this program to accelerate their learning a lot. Also, in the last weeks and months, I would like to commend the two individuals who know who they are who have completed their internship. This has really been a great honor to work with you, both of you. And to those who are still active, I look forward to seeing those updates and continuing to work with you. The internship consists of learning, doing, and also mentorship and facilitation. So interns tend to participate in one or more course or textbook group, or maybe help out with some live streams interns engage on projects and that is usually a minimum of two projects one is hosted at the institute so some of the projects that we'll look at later in this roundtable but then also most of the interns have a personal or background research agenda so sometimes they make very small contributions to an institute project but they're working really diligently on their dissertation or on their hobby project 
Other times, it's most of the contribution to the Institute project and then a little bit of self-guided research. And we try to provide our interns with support over multiple spatial and temporal scales. In terms of our engagement in the broader digital cyber-physical niche, we continue to grow on our different platforms and channels, though these are just proxy measures in our Discord, podcast, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as mailing lists. So we continue to communicate out to those who want to hear. Here's the big picture on Institute activities. And you can find this information at the activities page that's uh, listed here. Um, at the top, we have type of project, publication. Live streams, such as the one happening right now, and the Active Inference Journal, which picks up when the live stream hits stop and transcribes and curates, publishes that transcript, which we'll talk more about. So live streams and journal are a great pair. In the Active Blockference project, we continue to build the soft and hard skills associated with generative modeling in the Active Inference tradition. And so we use the complex adaptive systems modeling framework, CAD-CAD, to implement different active inference generative models. This is a really great place, a lot of discussions about modeling. Robotics and embodied, JF Cloutier continues to offer his expertise and updates from this really incredible project where real Lego robots are implementing symbolic active inference. So thanks JF for hosting this project the way you do. In the Active Inference Ontology, we continue to refine and update the Active Inference Ontology, which is the real language that we speak, whether it happens to be deployed in English or visually or in a programming language or however, the Active Inference Ontology is how we're communicating. And we develop that and offer it as a service to the niche in this project. We have multiple ongoing learning groups, which we'll talk more about soon, but we have a textbook group with Par et al., the 2022 Active Inference textbook. We have Sanjeev Namjoshi, who's writing a really incredible work that will be a textbook published as Fundamentals of Active Inference. And we're alpha testing along with Sanjeev and right there alongside him. So thanks Sanjeev for bringing this work in progress to the Institute and to, to really sticking with the trouble this is going to be an incredible product. And we have two courses, one on physics as information processing and one on active inference for the social sciences, which we'll address soon. And also multiple times per week in our discord, we have open discussions for education and research. So if this is all a lot, or you're not sure about anything, probably the best way to just drop in and find out would be to check out when and how we're meeting and come to the open discussions if you just want to like see what's up. Anything you want to add there, Alex? <clears throat> um, good to see that uh, projects are active and uh, the, the mostly maybe for last period of time, it's uh, having that uh, new courses, which we'll describe later, but uh, Having and feeling it's growing, it's uh, provide great uh, opportunities for second half of the year. So true. In the first quarterly roundtable, we had no courses, but as of now, we can say that there are two courses that are really pushing the frontier of education and even research in quantum information sciences and in social sciences. So. Thanks again. We'll get to those soon. All right, let's dive into a little more detail on Eduactive. So Alex, would you like to first introduce and give a little thoughts on the active inference qualification system draft? Yeah, we put it here like for now at education, a directive scale, but uh, future it uh, will be uh, applied for all institute structure and activities. So we should have some 
uh, cornerstone in terms of how we can me measure uh, effectiveness of our educational activities and ed educational services uh, in, in the beginning to understand uh, courses and uh, our materials how we change actually someone's mind and uh, uh, how deep <laughs> this mind need to be changed uh, in some formal sense and uh, we take uh, we not started from uh, uh, Greenfield, uh, we just uh, take one of a uh, stable system of qualifications level uh, from European and adapt it uh, for how we can see it in application to active inference and participations in projects and so on. And for now we have a basic draft and uh, we'll have uh, discussions around with interested parties on um, different scales of institute and uh, finally have some some stable form which will apply to a different direction. Thanks. I'll just add a few notes on this first, just echoing your last point. If you're interested in active inference professionalization education qualification systems even as a critic we would really love to have you in the game so please participate early participate often and i'll just highlight a few pieces of this system draft that are really exciting first it begins at level zero which everybody de facto can have perhaps even upon or before birth then as the levels proceed Active inference is always being connected with domains and systems of interest. So it's about yes and with active inference, about connecting active inference to other fields and topics, understanding a different domain's ontology, robotics or neuroscience or pure mathematics, whatever it may be, and working with active inference as you gain knowledge of the ontology and of the details of active inference, but it's not just a knowledge-based qualification system. We also are looking to integrate skills and even project responsibility and autonomy. So just to give kind of an example of this, levels one and two, again, currently very tentative drafts, so for your engagement, but in levels one and two, people are able to act as basic learners and collaborators and begin to get a grasp on what terms we're using in active inference and how do those concepts relate to their field of interest. And we see this every single day in the textbook group and in discussions, someone says, oh, I'm working as a physical therapist. And so in action, that's like the person moving their arm. That is where these levels are targeted. Level three, begins to get into describing and understanding some of the technical details of what we do. Level four begins to approach the evaluation and recapitulation of technical models in active inference. Level five is related to comprehensive development and implementation, as well as in the projects and autonomy, exerting more supervision for self and others. Level six, developing advanced skills. Level seven, engaging with very specialized problem solving skills and level eight engaging in synthesis evaluation and critical problem solving so again can't emphasize enough it's just a draft and we are calling for your participation if this is something that you would be interested in using or engaging with but we think this is going to be a really important direction for the active inference ecosystem carrying on to the textbook group so in the Active Inference textbook group, we are working on and through the Parr, Pizzullo, and Friston 2022 textbook. Currently, we have cohort three working on the second half of the book and cohort four on the first half of the book. Together, these two cohorts compromise about 150 people. Not every person joins every meeting. Some people engage with the recordings asynchronously. Other people are in our shared epistemic niche, just gleaning and contributing to this kind of collaborative stigmergic process. As educators, 
we're focused on the continual delivery and deployment of questions and enrichment and discourse. And just some ways that this plays out, here are, for example, questions that people have asked live or before or after a synchronous meeting where we can connect the specific figures and the ontology terms to people's uncertainties. And on the right is an example of an equation. Here's the variational free energy equation, 2.5, and the way that we can use the ontology to unpack and connect some of the dots with these equations. And in the last few weeks, we've actually taken that even further and explored how to use language models through Coda AI in this process. So here we have equations 2.1 and equations 2.2. They are being rendered in Coda via typing in LaTeX. And then we are using language models within Coda to provide explanations, contextualizations for different backgrounds and expertises, and also translation into different languages, describing the variables and the notation and the who, what, and why. So this has been a pretty fun avenue and a really cool example of how language models and education can be hand in hand and empower our own learning by using all kinds of models to help us where, frankly, it can be quite challenging, which is in understanding some of the analytical details of the framework. Anything you want to add, Alex? Uh, this is that type of technology which uh, looks like magic. <laughs> And uh, but and and but uh, uh, having in place ontology, which is uh, nicely integrated for Coda again to all projects, uh, it's really like an engine for this car, uh, which which is getting more and more big. Cool. Okay. In May 2023, we began our first course at the Institute, and that was Physics as Information Processing, being taught by one of the leading researchers in the area, Chris Fields, and with a math PhD course assistant, Ander Aguirre. So, Chris, thank you for stepping up again from the Scientific Advisory Board to offer this truly incredible and unique educational experience. We've had massive response, dozens of registrants who want to engage in the participatory discussions that happen in between your lectures. The second discussion being tomorrow for those who want to join. And uh, 1500 views of the first lecture in a month. There's many people who are following along the course syllabus is explicit and innovative. We have a question and answer system so that people can ask questions asynchronously. Chris then answers them and we have them posted again through this interactive Coda interface. And that's really supporting an incredible level of discourse and participation. All transcripts are going to be curated and published along with the questions and answers and some other supplemental information. So this has been a really great experience and something new over the last few months. Anything you want to add? I'm tempted to just talk about how cool the quantum information free energy principle is, but but perhaps now is not the moment. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's uh, uh, like historically for my whole background, starting from beginning on with century starting from IT technology technologies and computer science and this notion of information processing uh, it all always was uh, like uh, in engineering in engineering sense uh, like a uh, working field and working domain <coughs> and uh, but I always uh, had that uh, need and feeling for for first principles and for physics <laughs> in place. And for now, seeing this, that latest developments on uh, quantum quantum information theory, 
and how it uh, nicely connects uh, to free energy and active inference. It's really, really great to have uh, these uh, frontier cur curves uh, in place uh, in, uh, in our activities and uh, re re really great thanks uh, to Chris and Ander. And uh, I believe that it is kind of starting point, uh, maybe 10 years after we we'll come back all together and discuss how this course started uh, great changes for different ecosystems. Thank you, Alex. Totally agree. And also, we are fresh off the presses, happy to announce the second course that we'll be offering at the Institute, which is Constructing Cultural Landscapes, Active Inference for the Social Sciences. And this is going to be a multi-teacher, massively participatory course. Avel of Kairos Research, thank you for taking the initiative to suggest even this possibility. And Ben and Mao, Lorena, thanks a lot for joining on for the journey. On July 7th, we will begin and it will have some lecture sessions as well as participatory discussion sections. All session sessions are free. They'll be live streamed and rewatchable. The transcripts will be curated and published into a book at the end of the year. And this is going to be a really great on-ramp and space for people with a humanities or social sciences background. So we've heard people waiting for such a thing. It was Avel's insight that such a course could be hosted at Kairos Research and at the Active Inference Institute. So thanks to all the teachers here and just really looking forward to how you tackle and engage with this question of active inference in the social sciences. Anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, like uh, these uh, two different courses, like from um, uh, different to distinct scales, like from quantum scale and social scale, and possibly it's like uh, two different ends of spectrum in which we can work on with our research and education. And it's great that uh, this step to social sciences uh, because it uh, brings active inference and its formal and first principles principled framework into the domain which uh, haven't got it before. <laughs> and, uh, and now it's a great beginning also. And our scales between quantum and social will be uh, on us to work on next years. Yes. And uh, the kind of Ouroboros or horseshoe theory with quantum social sciences. On to the live streams. So, lot to say. Of course, a little bit meta since we're on a live stream right now. But I'll just note a few things. Um, first, across our different series, we now have 336 completed or planned live streams. So most of those have already happened, but there are several that are planned, but we're over 300 completed and 336 as of now being planned. And even just specifically looking at the next 30 days, we have just such a breadth and depth. It's quite exciting to, to watch, let alone to enact. We'll have the Chris Fields course, a discussion section, a lecture, and then another discussion section. We'll begin the active inference for the social sciences course with Avel, Ben having contributions. We'll have a guest stream with professors from around the world, researchers, all these different topics being able to be slotted in with a really great way to platform and give visibility and catalyze discussion around these incredible researchers work. So it's really exciting. And it would be great, I'm not going to say it's specifically a personal request, but if you choose to read it as such, then great. It would be awesome to have more assistance with participating and preparing and enacting live streams. 
we have role-based ways of planning and preparing and enacting live streams. So whether you want to play a more technical or operational or logistical role, if you want to be a conversational facilitator, if you want to do it in a different language, if you want to do a series, there's so many ways that you can get involved. But it would just be awesome to have more voices on the live stream and just be able to continue offering these kinds of resources at even faster rate with increased professionalization. And I know that there's many people out there who would be incredible contributors to broadcast and or facilitate. Everyone is also welcome to self-nominate or suggest or introduce somebody who you think would fit well on a stream. If it's like a perspective that we haven't heard from, that would be really important. There's a lot of background technical and educational work on the dot zero videos when we do a paper discussion. So if there's a paper that you want to have a, a million X leveraged contribution on your preparation around, if we discuss that in a live stream and you're able to help before with the dot zero, you'll be a co-author on a research publication of the transcript and you'll have made an absolutely unique irreplaceable contribution to active inference knowledge with what you did in your diligence in the dot zero. So for people who hear that calling, that's incredibly important. We invite people to share the live streams on social media or with their colleagues, however they find it relevant. Like if there's a topic or a person that has come up on our streams, sharing it where relevant will help bring people in. And also, we have weekly live stream meetings. So if you just want to find out like what we do and how we do it in the live streams, then I would recommend that you join the regular meetings. And if you really want to join, but that time never works for you, then email and let us know that you're specifically interested. We'll find a different time. Any other comments there, Alex? Uh, for this moment, uh we can see that uh, uh, a lot of uh, live stream activity is happening with participation of people not only uh, with our own preparations but uh, with people who just want to share ideas and so on and uh, if we can uh, keep uh, this rhythm to having different people with their interests and sharing ideas and uh, uh, yes, if people will join to help us to do it more and more often, maybe it will be great. Thank you. The Active Inference Journal picks up where live stream stops. The Active Inference Journal is engaged in continuous deployment and development of speech to text transcription automated and manual editing and curation, and finally publication. So just to give an example, a live stream will occur, and then we use speech to text onto a public GitHub repository. Everybody can edit the markdown file, and then we're able to publish those transcripts so that they can be citable so that a conversation someone has can go onto their resume as a true citable publication. And we can just facilitate the accessibility and the findability of these incredible conversations and moments that we have. And also in the Active Inference Journal, we're always developing the process from setup for those of all technical backgrounds, how to get things working on your own local setup or on a cloud setup using free and open source software where possible, the speech to text, the text processing, editing, translating into languages, rendering into a diversity of formats, publishing through different channels, and then engaging in further analysis related to natural language processing and the active inference ontology, all these fun things we can do. So if you, in an alternate multiverse, were a librarian or an editor or a reviewer or an advocate of the active inference corpus, bring it into this reality and make a huge contribution by cultivating our epistemic garden and our offerings, because there's so much enrichment that can happen 
with past streams and with proactively letting the live stream project know and letting courses know how we can help them at the journal to develop these kinds of publications that in new ways are expanding definitions of scholarship and research and service. Anything else to add? Yeah. Uh, as for this project, I, I, I believe it's like most uh, technical uh, heavy in the Institute and uh, maybe we can call it more broadly like a language processing project. And uh, maybe it is a good starting point for people who good, uh, who have uh, good technical skills, some programming skills, which are related to language processing in general, or some specific part of it. Uh, maybe it will be of interest for them to start from this project and later get a better grasp on what is active influence is. Awesome. Totally agree. It's like seeing the range of live streams is really one of the best ways to just jump into understanding the, the, the ways and the topics that people speak. Okay. We'll just briefly mention the research work happening, but this last several month period has been extremely focused and extremely productive on education with the two new courses, the qualification system, all of these other curricular developments. Um, so there's several ongoing research projects. We have the Active Inference Ontology as a research and development initiative, Active Blockference as a software package for complex systems modeling using Active Inference, Robotics and Embodied, with JF's symbolic active inference robots. And then there's some project seeds that we always love to offer up to interns or to volunteers as something that they can like restart and take a lot of initiative, something that's just planted, but, but barely there. And that right now is the graphical interface with thinking really expansively about what it looks like to learn and apply active inference from an embodied perspective and cognitive agent modeling, doing meta-analysis and synthesis across different cognitive modeling frameworks so that we can really have a place to point when we describe how different cognitive phenomena, speaking to a cognitive pattern language, are implemented or addressed by active inference and other frameworks. And then there's the so many of you who engage in individual research. So there's a lot of research happening in the space and we see education as a fundamental enablement for research as part of the Institute's mission for education and research development. So it's been good times with research and uh, I'm really excited to see all the, all the projects that people share during sessions start to develop and, and flourish. Anything else you wanna add about research, Alex? Uh, yeah, maybe uh, this uh, direction was not so active last time, uh, but uh, as we discussed for future directions uh, that uh, we will uh, bring more attention and more efforts to maybe uh, formalize a bit how we as an institute can service uh, people around from ecosystems. Uh, how we can support them on their ways and so on. So uh, it will be good times in the, here too. Yeah, agreed. We want to provide a lot of research services. So for people who, who want to be on any side of that table, reach out. All right. Well, the last section here is going to be a short active inference based presidential address. I will be just speaking to some recent developments as well as past developments in the active inference space and just give a few thoughts on how they relate to the Active Inference Institute and what we're all doing here. If you're watching live, please write some questions or comments into the live chat. And at the end of this short address, we will review any other 
comments or questions from those who are here live, give some last thoughts, and then we'll be back into the work. So I wanted to begin this address with a reference to the work that was before Active Inference Institute, which was Active Inference Lab, but even before Active Inference Lab, there was the collaboration with Alex, Yvonne, Alexandra, RJ, and myself around active inference and behavior engineering for teams and organizations. And this was in September 2020, only a few years ago now, more than two, but less than three years ago. And uh, it's amazing how far things have come. And at the same time, how many of the topics that we were able to bring into this context of remote teams and organizations still ring as relevant. And they're just gestured to here. We've gone far towards enacting and implementing and improving, but still we can think about cognitive entities engaged in the cyber physical niche with narrative and rhetoric, structuring their understanding of how sensory data translate into action. So for people who are interested in this topic, we invite you one way or another to engage with us on this journey because we are only gonna do it all together. So just wanted to begin with that kind of callback to several years ago, though so much has changed certainly for all of us in the times between that when we really find first principles approaches like active inference, and when we really care about systems of interest and communities, then the actions that we take, we don't regret. But I think we can go into a little bit more detail and reference some recent developments in the active inference ecosystem that speak to how day after day, week after week, our system of interest, active inference, learning and application, really gifts or blesses us with new ways of thinking and new ways of acting. So for example, just within the last months, the inner screen model of consciousness was released as a preprint by Maxwell Ramstead et al. Dealing with all these topics that we know and love and building upon the quantum free energy principle formalism, which again, it's easy to forget, was not even in place two years ago, discussed in live stream number 40. And weeks after publication, we're able to enact a conversation, hearing from voices all over the world, bringing experts and those with different backgrounds onto the screen. Here, the screen that you see is the classical information depository that enables us as quantum cognitive agents to engage with each other. And so all of these beautiful people on the stream who with their regime of attention and their quantum cognitive rotation brought to bear their attention and their language contribution through action. We are able to inscribe that on classical digital artifacts like live streams and transcripts, and then provide it to the niche for all of you to rotate that into your own space and context. So again, the spatial, temporal, and conceptual linkages are happening at a speed that is boggling. And on the right is a paper from just this month, officially, by Thomas Parr et al, Cognitive Effort and Active Inference. And I have the image small because there's more details to go into in the paper. However, they used a well-known model of cognitive burden called the Stroop model, which shows a color written out as a word and that word is shown in some color. So the color red, written in red, the color red, written in blue, and the timing dynamics of people's reading behavior and recognition behavior is a proxy for cognitive effort. And so this is just one more, not even brick in the wall, not even just one tool in the toolkit, but like another lens or layer or ability or capacity for active inference framework, which adds these features, affect, memory, anticipation, all these different features are layered in like a symphony without developing bloat 
because the first principles kernel, the cognitive firmware, is not getting bloated. It is staying at first principles, and sometimes it feels like even diving down to zeroth principles, while advanced research in the space is able to help us understand really sophisticated cognitive phenomena like cognitive effort. Now one can look back through the previous stream and what we discussed and how could cognitive effort help us support the accessibility, rigor, and applicability of active inference. It's such a natural question. And again, week after week, our niche provides us with new ways of thinking and doing. So it's so fun to be gripping and gripped within active inference. I'd like to recognize and commend Jakob's excellent work. Just in April, we published Generalized Notation Notation for Active Inference Models. GNN, Generalized Notation Notation, is a plain text format for conveying active inference generative models. It's something like a dialect of Markdown, and it brings us closer and closer to the triple play. The triple play is the idea that we should have integrity amongst multiple representations of active inference models. That is, what we see visualized graphically or tangibly, what we hear and say in terms of the natural language use, and with executable cognitive simulations. So if someone looks at an organizational flowchart and there's three A's connected to two B's, that is something that we can visualize, describe, and execute so that there isn't a front and a back room conversation. Rather, there's an integrated conversation that allows for everybody to make contributions in the modalities and in the ways that they want. And the interlingua, not the only interlingua and by no means its final version, is the plain text generalized notation notation. We're having a lot of fun working with language models and visualizing this, transforming it into executable simulations. And so thanks again, Jakob, for the really creative and dedicated work because this method is gonna be a real core functionality for translating across visual elements, our natural languages, and the kinds of simulations that we wanna run. And I'll close with uh, a recent publication with Carl Friston et al, including myself and Blue. So two out of three officers on the paper, not terrible. And in this paper, we used free energy principle and active inference to provide something like a measuring or an observability framework for ecology evolution and development or eco evo devo. And the way that this was done is through the renormalization group of physics. And so in this image on the left, we can see it as like maybe a bunch of cells, which each contain organelles, and those cells make a tissue. Or the big circle might be the population of organisms or the ecosystem community. Again, recognizing the nested niche engagement within and across levels of, of spatial and temporal modeling and looking at just two layers and how they're connected we can think of that as a, a nested action perception cycle so here's like the behavior sensory um and the behavior of of a worm in this case happening at whatever time scale it's being modeled at and then at the slower or the deeper level of the hierarchical model we have the bayesian learning like process of the extended genotype happening in a slower adaptive layer. And so this should clearly connect to what we said at the very beginning of the stream about the Institute as part of a nested system. Here we have the ecosystem, the space around. Here's the Institute. This is what it really means to enter and to join, not just to look into but to be on or in the Institute. And then the kinds of dynamic partitions that we're able to embody within the Institute through our communications 
and, and through our actions. And so it's just so exciting to see everyone's incredible research contributions, the kinds of questions and developments that even if I were not an author, even if I were not in the active inference field, I would believe are at least the right things to be trying in terms of bringing theoretical integration in ecology, evolution, and development. At least these are the right research avenues. But then again, to be able to act, infer, and serve through the Institute as a multi-scale evolutionary entity in and of itself, this kind of real-time enactment of multiple scales and quantum reference frames is something that is only arising through co-creation. So in closing, I send my deepest appreciation to all those who support and care and engage. To those who are not sure, I welcome you to the past, the present, and the future. We respect, and that's why we do what we do. So, Alex, where where do we go, or what is next? Well, yeah, Th thank you very much for the talk, uh, and and really providing that uh, uh, vision from 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 the beginning and how it's going now. And uh, congratulations on that uh, publication on evolutionary work. And it's a great opening direction. And uh, hope, I believe uh, this direction will make a next step into techno evolution also. And we will use this techno evolution as a principal approach to develop institute and ecosystem. Yes, I'll just wait a few more seconds if anyone writes a question that we can address in the live chat. Let's look at some of these questions that we look at at the end of every live stream. What would a good understanding enable? Well, if we were able to really understand our own generative model as the Institute and as the active inference ecosystem, it would support our sense-making and decision-making. We'd be able to act and infer and serve better. What are the unique predictions and implications? That's a very interesting question. I'm sure there are many ways to, to address this, and we, we did have many future-oriented expressions during this discussion even today. What are the next steps for free energy principle and active inference? Again, do you have any thoughts on this one, the middle question, or the second question, Alex? Uh, I believe that and the unique predictions and next steps uh, depends uh, on some specific field or domain. Uh, for, 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 our, for ourselves, we understand that active inference is a scale-free approach, and it just... Uh, can be applied to any scale of research, uh, any domain which uh, any researcher or engineer is working on, can be described with active inference language. And starting from, from where, uh, using affordances to computational modeling or from our types of modeling and so on. Yeah. What are the goals of the research? To embody our mission to support the active inference ecosystem, to, to be the best institute we can be, be the best nest mates within it. What do you think? Uh, maybe we should remove goals. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's change it to preferences. Uh, yeah. yeah, at least. Uh, and considering it, uh, in open and in this way, again, we, we, can, we can speak about those, but it looks like it's not so useful concept. Yes. Sometimes when we're talking about the um, specific research papers, we talk about the goal of that paper, but goal is not to be found 
in the active inference ontology. And we find ways of making do and thriving without needing to rest upon goals and reward. And that's really exciting. And that's something that a lot of people don't even realize that they're steeped in reward maximization and goal implementation until the open-endedness and, and the um, vitality of active inference becomes understood. What are you still curious about? I'll let you go first, then I'll give a last thought as we close. Um, I always remember our discussions about sense of the word curious uh, in the beginning. Uh, it's like, uh, uh, I believe it, uh, that we are curious, more, more and more curious with uh, each week, each day, each month, uh, what our field, our frontier are showing us so much. And, uh, a lot of different perspectives, uh, different connections, uh, real people in communications and projects, and so on. So it's happiness. Very beautiful. I'm curious about many things like that you said that we uh, develop and hone that curiosity every day and we, we seek to, to spark and be sparked when people come in from different backgrounds with their curiosities. It's inspiring to say the least. And I'm really curious about who will have listened or read this far in the stream and choose that moment to take an action to get involved with the Institute. So there's only one way that my uncertainty is gonna be reduced about that. And I think if you know, you know. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, Blue. Thank you to the officers and to all of the Institute. See you around. Thank you. Thank you.